Hello! My name is Zork, and I'm gonna walk you through my process for animating a picture. First, let me say there are many ways to create animations using all sorts of wonderful different devices and apps and programs. I'm going to show you how I do my animations, which is not necessarily the best or most correct way. It's just the way I know how to do this. Okay? Now I know you're thinking, Zork, when are you going to show me how to animate this bunny? I just want to say, slow down. Before we get all technical, I want to explain the basic ideas of what we're about to do. There are two basic things we're doing. Make a puppet move a puppet. Let's focus on making a puppet first. Most pictures you'll find online will be a flat image, like a drawing on a piece of paper. Now you can take that piece of paper, use it like a puppet, and move it around, and that could be an animation. But we want to make a better puppet, to bring it to life more. So we have to cut out our character. Already that makes a big difference. But we want to make an even better puppet. So we need to cut the character into separate parts. Arms, legs, head, body. Now we have a lot more control over this character and can really bring him to life. That's everything we're doing. You can stop this video right now if you don't want to get more technical with me. I've shown you the entire magic trick, boys and girls. For everyone else, Let's go back to the two parts of this process. Make a puppet, move a puppet. We're using Adobe Photoshop to make the puppet. Making a good puppet is the most important part. Then we're going to import the puppet into Adobe After Effects to move the puppet. Then at the very end, we have to save it as an animated GIF. But let's focus on the animation right now, okay? Here we go! We want to open up the original picture file in Photoshop. First thing I notice is that this is a PNG file, and this checkerboard pattern shows me that it's got a transparent background. I won't get into all the different file types, but PNG files often have transparent backgrounds, which is great for us because it saves us a step. We don't have to cut out the character from the background because it's already cut out for us. One thing we should look at is the image size. It turns out this is a really big image. If we keep this image at this size, it'll take a lot longer for the computer to finish rendering our final animation. So let's make it smaller because it doesn't really need to be this big for our purposes. Change the resolution to 72, which is what you'll typically see on a computer screen. And we're going to change the width to 720 pixels. Notice that the height changes automatically because it's linked to the width, which is great. Now, why 720 pixels? That's specific to hit record. Animated GIFs that we upload to hit record can't be wider than 730 pixels. So I'll usually size things down to 720 pixels wide. I'm also gonna resize the picture within the picture frame so that we have more room to play. I use a PC, so the keyboard shortcut is Control T to get this freeform transform tool. If you use a Mac, I believe it's Command T. So you can make that change if you need to, but I'm just gonna keep using the word control as we go forward. When you use the freeform transform tool, hold down the shift button to keep the height and width ratio the same as you resize the picture. When you're happy with the size, just hit enter. So let's cut this bunny into separate pieces and make our puppet. I usually use the polygonal lasso tool to cut up pictures. You can also use the regular lasso tool. It doesn't really matter. Control X will cut the image. Control V will paste the image onto a new layer. We want to place each piece of this puppet onto a separate layer. The ears, the arms, the head. We want to think about how we want this animal to move. I'm fast forwarding this footage by the way, I'm not really this fast. Or am I? I rearrange the order of the layers as I go to make sure the final puppet will look as close to the original image as possible. Parts of certain pieces will be hidden, part of an ear behind a head, 
part of an arm behind a body. It's kind of like a puzzle, taking a picture apart and putting it back together like this. When you cut a picture apart like this, there will obviously be gaps in the picture. We want to fill in those gaps. Now there are a few different ways you can do this. Because this is a simpler image, I'm just going to use the clone stamp and the smudge tool. They're pretty simple tools to use. The smudge tool is really good for smoothing over harsh edges. You're basically just trying to fill in all the empty spots. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look good enough to make the illusion work while everything's moving. When we're done, the finished puppet should look very much like the original image. It's just been split into a bunch of overlapping layers. I rename each layer so it's clear to me which layer is which. Ear 1, Ear 2, Arm 1, Arm 2. In the end, all that matters is that you personally can keep track of what each layer is. Once you're satisfied, make sure you save your file. Note, you need to save this as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. That way all your new layers will be saved. We're going to need them in After Effects. Close your Photoshop file, now switch over to After Effects. After Effects can be a little scary at first, but it's really not that bad when you get used to it. You work with layers, just like in Photoshop, but here we're more focused on movement, timing. This is where the magic happens, kids! So if I lose you with any of these steps, don't worry, there's a chance you might need some more basic training in After Effects before you start doing what I'm about to do here, but just try to follow along so that you can see what's happening. We want to right click in the project window and select import and then file. From there, we want to select the Photoshop file we just created and click on import. You'll see this pop-up box, make sure that the import kind says composition and the editable layer styles is selected under layer options hit ok double click on this file we just imported and we should see all the layers we just created in photoshop in the same order since there was no background in the original file one of the first things i'm going to do with this particular animation is create a white background just to keep it simple to do that go to the menu layer then select New and Solid. I'm going to pick the whitest shade of white and hit OK. Rearrange this solid layer so it's at the bottom, serving as our background. Now we want to set up the length of our animation. So we go to Composition, Composition Settings. Here we want to adjust the frame rate and the duration. Let's change the frame rate to 24. I I just like working with 24 frames per second. And let's change the duration to 1 second and 12 frames. That's 1 and a half seconds of animation. Now, why 1 and a half seconds? A longer animation will create a larger file in the end. Since we're making an animated GIF, we want to limit the size as much as possible. 1 and a half seconds is a good amount of time to create a looping animation. Anchor points. Okay. I'm setting the anchor points for each layer. Think of anchor points as these little hinges. Click on a layer, expand the transform menu, highlight anchor point and hit Y. Then it's just a matter of dragging the little anchor point to the right place. It'll be clearer once we start making things move. Next. We're linking layers. Okay, here we want to link the bunny ears to the head. So if we move the head, the ears move along with it. Link the arms to the body. Now finally, we're ready to start animating. Notice the tiny stopwatches beside the transform menu items like position and scale and rotation. You click on that so we can create a keyframe. 
Keyframes are how we animate. We place keyframes at different points in our timeline in order to create movement. Notice how the keyframes look like little diamond shaped markers in the timeline. I'm going to change that slightly. This isn't too important, but it's something I do to help smooth out movements. I select the keyframes, right click on the mouse, select keyframe assistant, then easy ease. That will change the shape of the keyframes and it will just smooth out the timing so movements look a little less robotic. Again, this isn't too important at this point. You can totally skip this if you want to just play with basic movements for now. We're going to start with big general movements here and then we're going to add details as we go, okay? We're focusing on the body layer here because all the layers link back to our body layer. The ears are connected to the head, the head is connected to the body, the arms are connected to the body. At each keyframe, I'm adjusting the position and the rotation values. A lot of this is trial and error. You should experiment with it on your own. Here I'm just guessing what might look good to create a hopping movement. Notice for every layer, I want to begin and end with the same keyframe values because we want this to loop perfectly. I'm going to hit the play button to preview the animation. Now even with just one layer of movement, you can already see this bunny coming to life. Before we go further, I'm just going to click on this button for each layer that's labeled Motion Blur. When that's checked, it'll automatically create a blur effect when something's moving at a certain speed. It's just another little thing to help us convey a sense of life. Now we're going to add a little motion to the head. Just focusing on rotation with the head, it's going to rotate on that anchor that we've already set. Of course, the ears move along with it since they're linked. A lot of this is using your imagination now, trying to imagine how this creature would move. I imagine it bobs its head slightly as it hops because of gravity and momentum. Next, I want to focus on those ears. Again, I'm just going to use, the ch use changes in rotation throughout the timeline. I want to make the ears seem floppy as it hops. Right now, they're too stiff. All the little details add up when you're bringing something to life little attentions to detail using your imagination. We've got one ear animated so let's get another one. Let's speed through this a little. Now we've got the head and ears both animated just using rotations and it's already looking a lot better. Don't worry that you're not seeing any of the motion blur during the previews. The actual motion blur doesn't get created until you've finished rendering the entire animation. We'll get to that. Let's animate the rabbit's arms now. I know they're technically legs, but I like to label them arms just so they're easier to keep track of. Arm 1 and arm 2, leg 1 and leg 2. We didn't separate the legs here because I wanted to keep this a little simpler. Fast forwarding through the arms keyframe a bit. It's basically the same process as the ears and head, just trying to imagine how each part would move over the course of the animation, making sure that it returns to the same position at the end to create a perfect loop. All these different pieces of movement come together at the end to create this illusion of life. But you're just focusing on one little piece of movement at the time when you animate like this. Now, I'm going to do something a little more complicated to animate the body. There's a tool called the Puppet Pin Tool. The icon looks like a little push pin. Make sure I've got the body layer selected and then I select the Puppet Pin Tool. And my cursor turns to a little push pin. Now I'm going to add little points to the body layer. Around the head, the tail, the feet, the back. All these points are going to have their own keyframes in the layer menu. They'll be under Effects, Puppet, Mesh 1, and Deform. Treat these just like we've treated the other keyframes. Copy and paste the keyframes at the beginning and end of the timeline so we've got a perfect loop. Now we're just going to play with this. With the Puppet tool, you're basically just stretching the shape as if it were made of rubber. There's another tool that's slightly more advanced. I'm rushing past a lot of these things at this point just to give you an overview of this process. Let's use the Puppet tool on one of the ears just to show how we can add further refinements. Make the bunny ear move a little floppier. Okay, at this point, it's still a little rough around their edges, but it's come a long way and you've got a sense of how everything works. 
you can keep refining the animation until you're happy with all of it. And then when you're ready, it's time to render your final animation. Go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. You're about to create a video file. I personally always create an AVI file, but you can create any kind of video file that works. Click on the Render button. It may take a little while to render completely depending on the size and complexity of your animation. When it's done, head back to Photoshop, go to File, Import, Video Frames to Layers. Select the video you just rendered, and you should just see this pop-up. This is where we're creating the final animated GIF. Hit OK. Now select File, Save for Web, and you get this pop-up. If you want to upload an, uh, an animated GIF to hit record, it can't be wider than 730 pixels. The file can't be larger than about 2.8 megabytes. It so happens that the animation we just created is small enough. If your file is too big, you can do all sorts of things to get the size down. But for now, let's just save this new GIF. And we're done! I know. I know. It's a lot of information. Don't worry if you didn't quite get all of it. There are a lot of little details, but I hope you get a general idea of how all of this works. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.